under, hey. Hi everyone. I will talk about abusing Bash on Windows. Uh, the idea of the presentation is you've got some code execution on a Windows box. There is some Bash on it, like Sigwin or WSL, and what can you do with that in order to do uh, some post exploitation? Uh, I'm a pen tester at Entity Security France, and so uh, I will talk about uh, Bash on Windows. The fact is interesting for an attacker, how to backdoor it, and some other stuff about app locker and forensics. All the scripts of the presentation are available on GitHub. The aim is to be reproducible by you, and if you need to do the stuff, you can do it just by copy pasting uh, my scripts. So Bash on, on Windows. No, the, we have two, two software. There is Sigwin. Uh, since 2001, it's not distributed by Microsoft. Uh, it's available since XP, but it's working on older version. And since two years, since two years, we have uh, WSL, Windows Subsystem for Linux. Uh, it's, it's my replace Sigwin in the time. Uh, it's not installed by default on Windows, but it's edited by Microsoft. Uh, and for now, it's only for Windows 10 and Windows Server 2019. Uh, I looked for some previous research on these tools. I didn't find anything on Sigwin, only some CVE. And as WSL is very young, there is some, they had some research at Recon or Blue Hat. So, uh, how can you install it? Sigwin, it's a basic installation file. For WSL, it's a um, little more complicated. You need to enable developer modes, reboots, uh, the Windows subsystem for Linux, reboots, and then you will have uh, on the Microsoft Store some different subsystem. And you can install all the subsystem on the same computer. You can have Debian on Kali and OpenSUSE and so on. For Sigwin, uh, it's just a classical installation file. You just have to choose your package at the installation. And the main difference between these both system is that Sigwin is running some uh, PE file. It's bash, but it's executable file from the Windows world. In uh, WSL, you are running real uh, elf file, and you can comp compile a file on your classical Linux, put it on Windows, and uh, execute it. Uh, Sigwin is on the C folder. And for, um, for the fun facts, um, everyone can read every file in Sigwin. So if you have two users uh, in the Sigwin world, uh, the first user can read the file from the second user. So if you stored your SSH key on Sigwin, everyone can read, everyone on the system can read them without being system. Uh, for WSL, it's a little small, but uh, it's more complicated because at the beginning there were only Ubuntu on Windows, so there were only one pass for uh, the, file, the, the Linux file system, and since there is a lot of version, they did a stuff with some package, and you can have many folders and many file systems. And if you install Kali on Debian on your Windows, you will have two Linux file systems, two Linux kernel, and so on. Uh, at the first run, when you run Sigwin, it's just created some uh, classical window, uh, Linux file like bashrc and so on. on uh, oh, it's small. When you run uh, a WSL system at the first time, uh, it asks you for uh, a password for your sudo accounts because you have sudo on, uh, on WSL. And um, the fun fact with that is if there is sudo and you run bash on WSL, you will not be able to run ATC shadow because you are not root. But the file system is, is stored in your own app data file, so you can read it from Windows. So you've got a password that you cannot read from Bash, but you can read from cmd.exe. They are stored here. Uh, this is the old version uh, at the top, and at the bottom it's uh, the newer version. The package name uh, uh, depends on the subsystem you used and the version. I did a Metasploit post module that will try to find every shadow file and download it if you already have code execution, and if your system, you can read every with a Linux file system of every user. Uh, you can easily call uh, your Sigwin or your bash system from Windows. Uh, for Sigwin, you have to use the full pass of the scripts, and uh, for um, WSL, there is a variable in the pass that can, you, can allow you to use bash or Debian and so on. There is, there are there. And you can do the other way. You can call some Windows command from the Linux system uh, by using the full pass or um, just running cmd.exe. So you can run 
bash from CMD, CMD from bash, rerun bash from CMD, and so on. It's like an exception. Um, it's kind of be on a, a normal thing, but uh, you can think it's a normal thing. You can create a file from Windows and read it uh, in your Linux file system. Here I'm creating a file from uh, in the Linux file system from Windows, and I can read it. And the same thing for Cygwin. But on the first version of WSL, if you create it, created a file from Windows, the file didn't exist in the Linux file system. Um, and this created uh, uh, the first problem of, of WSL. It's uh, the AV wasn't able to monitor what was happening in this system. So at the, um, at the beginning of WSL, you had a lot of malware that cannot be seen in the subsystem. No, they are seen, but the fun fact is if you created a, a metapreter for Windows, most of the AV will know it as a malicious file. And if you created a metapreter for Linux, it will not be seen by so many AV. So as you have your uh, Linux file system, WSL, that can run ELF file, you can run a Linux malicious file and evade some AV on the system. So why I've been interested in, in Bash for Windows, uh, the user of that, that tools are developers, admins, incident response team, and everything I can do on a Linux box, I cannot do it on a, on a, on a Windows box, and I can also try to use malware uh, from the Linux world. Everything next is assume that you already have a code execution on the machine. It's not uh, having code execution. It's just post-exploitation. Uh, some example, it's you've got a remote code execution on a computer and you want to hide a reverse shell into WSL process uh, because it's less monitored. Uh, or you want to, you have a remote code execution, there is WSL, you read the etc shadow file, you are able to crack the hash. Maybe the password is used somewhere else. So for the remote shell parts, uh, there is two points. There is the um, one-liner remote shell you can have from Linux systems and the Metropreter one. So I just look for uh, a cheat sheet from Pentest Monkey, a list of um, one-liner one -liner reverse shell. I just don't use Java because I had to compile some stuff. And I look into every system, uh, which one is using by default, a bash, Perl, and so on. And you, you've got a lot of uh, um, remote shell uh, by default. There is just some Ruby or Netcat which is not working. Netcat is because you don't have the dash e option, and for Ruby it's because on Pentest Monkey it's uh, for Ruby one nine, and now you have Ruby two two one two two so on. So you can easily change the line, and it's still working. If you really want to use uh, a reverse shell from a tool that is not installed, you might be able to install it. On WSL, it's like on your classic Linux. You just need to be root on the Linux. And for Sigwin, you need to have a local administrator privilege, so it can be hard. And for the metapreter part, as I told before, uh, uh, Sigwin is not able to run ELF, so it's not working. But WSL can run ELF, so the I don't know why stage payload not working on WSL, but stage laid, stageless payload do so. You can easily, uh, having a metapreter here, it's a Linux metapreter, run on WSL, and then you can call your uh, cmd.exe and have your uh, cmd from a Linux um, reverse shell. And uh, there is no screen in WSL. It's not working. Even if you install it, it will not work. But you have Temux, which is working, so you can hide your reverse shell uh, in WSL, and the user will only see a bash process running and without know what is running in it. Um, the other stuff is, how can we still passwords, hash, or elevate using bash? Uh, the first case is, I had a small script at bash startup. It's very classic on the Linux world and backdooring Linux, and it's performing an SMB request to my computer. So the idea is to, coach, uh, to call uh, the... Um, the SMB request with responder, uh, um, I can do that from the Windows world. I have code execution. I can already do that. But if I backdoor, if I backdoor bash, every time the guy will you run bash, I will have the hash. And if he changes password, because he has to change his password every, I don't know, 60 day, I will have the new hash every 60 day. Or if I can um, execute code on a computer which is off the network, for example, a non-log computers, I can do that. And when he will go back on the network, I can get the hash. So it's a pretty small script, either one. 
you can use responder to catch the, um, the hash or use a, a relay attack, and it's it's pretty easy. You, you just the iron here it's Sigwin. I backdoor Sigwin. I quit, and when uh, the user will run Sigwin again, it will perform uh, a SMB request. So there is no request here. The user is running Sigwin. It's a little bit slow. I don't know because it's Sigwin, and I have got my SMB requests on on the network. Uh, okay, so I can cause it. Uh, after that, it's other some classical stuff like uh, get the bash sudo password. So it's not working on Sigwin because there is no sudo. The idea is to create a fake sudo scripts. We will ask the password to the user and then re run the real sudo scripts, sudo uh, bi binary. It's pretty easy. You can either pass on a file system or send it over the network. It's it's nothing really new in there. It's just that you can steal a password and maybe it will be uh, reused somewhere else. So uh, it's you can see it or not? Yeah. So we can see the real sudo one and. Um, when the user rerun again, it asks for his password. So every time he runs sudo, the first time it failed. So it may give him a, a hint that there is something wrong. And he can fail four times that it's, this is not normal on Linux. So he will have a hint of that. But you already have the passwords. Uh, yeah. It's, yeah. Okay. Um, we can do that, but we can also ask for the Windows password from Bash. Uh, every time you run uh, WSL, if there is updates needed, it will tell you, hey, guy, you need to update WSL. So you just add to that a small script asking for his password, and you can get it. It's, oh, it's, this, this, it's really the same idea. It's just about having the Windows part. And you can do that because you can interact between Windows and, and Linux, uh, and you can get his uh, Windows username from the Linux system very easily. Uh, it's, here it's a domain account. Normally you can see yeah, ACLU, the, ACLU, uh, servers on ACLU domain. So you can get this password and you can do stuff really realistic, but it will run every time, so it can give hints to that too. Okay, and the fourth idea I had, it was about uh, asking admin privilege. Uh, you may just want to ask the user to run uh, privilege software like Metapreter or Mimikatz. For that, I found three options, the run as from the command line, the run as from PowerShell, and shell run as from sysinternals. For the run as from the CLI, uh, it's not working because uh, it's you run the Windows binary, it's asking for you, it's asking you to type the password in the Windows CMD, you are not in the Windows CMD, so it's crashing. On, uh, on the um, uh, PowerShell stuff, that's what is really nice, it's uh, the user must elevate, if you use a non-privileged account, it will not work, it will ask him the, to retype a, a password, and uh, if you run a script, it will tell you that you are running Windows command processor. So if you put meta, Metasploits uh, or uh, Mimikatz in a CMD fi uh, bat file, it will tell you, oh, it's signed by Microsoft, but it's not. Uh, and if you are using sysinternals, there is some stuff like saying sysinternals bat. It's, it's pretty weird. So as the user must elevate with PowerShell, I choose that. And it's... Okay, the next one. The idea is the same, it will just ask for the password of the user. Uh, but here you are not stealing the password, you are just getting privileged accounts. So I try with the non-privileged accounts, it will tell me this request uh, an elevation, and then I will get uh, my... It's not a script, I just run a CMD for the demo, and I am a local admin with that. So that's just basic Linux stuff on Windows, but... Uh, what about AppLocker? Uh, I'm not here to tell you how to implement AppLocker. There is a lot of stuff on the internet to well implement AppLockers. There is some default, root, default rules from Microsoft, which are 
sometimes wrong because you can execute everything from uh, the Windows folder or there is a thumb folder, a thumb folder in it. My idea was to say, okay, you restrict uh, the user with AppLocker and uh, you allow him to run Sigwin or Bash and what can be done. So here I cannot run a script from the Sigwin uh, pass because I forgot, I, I forbid the scripts, but I can read, uh, I can run, sorry, I can run uh, uh, bash scripts from Sigwin. It's normal. And if I try to uh, do that on uh, WSL, it's the same thing, but if I try to call some cmd.exe and so on and I, it's forbidden, I will not be able to do that. Um, no, I try to compile a hello world file on Sigwin. I try to execute it and it failed because, as I told you before, it's a P file and the P file is forbidden. But if you do that on WSL, uh, you will be able to uh, run your um, your Linux file. So you can, even if there is AppLocker, if WSL is uh, authorized, you can compile everything you want and do what you want. The only stuff is that GCC is uh, only uh, enabled with uh, slash and open source for Windows. I also ask myself if I can bypass smart screen, but in fact, smart screen is, can be bypassed only by running your binary from this command line. So, And that points some question about forensics, because uh, now you have to look into the bash system f uh, for forensic, the bash history, the path, and so on. And for example, if you run Sigwin and another user is running Sigwin and you do PS, you will see his process. But as every user has his own WSL, you won't see his process. And if you try to dump memory from a task manager from a, a Elf, which is running, you won't be able to do that because Windows don't know how to do it. So how can Windows, how Windows can handle the WSL memory? How, you can, how can you investigate WSL sub-process that has not run by you and so on? Okay, and the, f the 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 end is just some bonus. It's uh, I don't know if some of you remember GNU Win 32, is just some uh, shell escape from mostly CTF and how to do them on uh, GNU uh, Win 32. Okay, is there any question? Any questions in the room? <laughs> oh. And well, Tony, you'll be around outside if anybody wants to speak. So thank you very much. <laughs>